Thank you. I'm Mr. Lehner, and no, it's not nighttime. I'm just trying this lesson without the lights on. I know it can be tricky to see these in-book examples with the camera as it focuses in and out, so we're going to try this one without the lights to see if that helps with the lighting in terms of our projector up here. Again, uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of different problems from your CMP book, so if you have your book at home, it might be easier to follow along in your book as we talk about these problems rather than relying on what's on the screen. Uh, and today we're going to work on lesson uh, or investigation 1.2, which again is taking a look at uh, datas in terms of tables and graphs. So we're going to analyze some student work here and a couple of problems here. We're going to start with problem number five. So let's take a look. In problem five up here it says, students have a test to see how many steps they can complete in 10 minutes. Andrea and Ken plot the results. Their graphs are shown below. So think of like gym class, when you guys do your pull-ups or your sit-ups or your um, push-ups or the pacer test. These are all things that you can actually take your results and graph them and use that data to show your rate in between um, how many push-ups you do per minute, how many you know, laps you can do per second, I mean not laps per second, I don't know if you'll be able to do that, but laps per minute um, as part of your rate as well. Let's take a look. On the x-axis, they put their time in minutes, both of them. And on the y-axis up here, they put number of sit-ups. So they were doing a sit-up test. Uh, if I look at Andrea's graph up here, I see she did an uh, interval of one on the bottom for her minutes. And I see that Kev's graph, he did an interval of one on the bottom. Uh, for the number of sit-ups, I see that Andrea decided to do an interval of 50 each time. And I see that uh, Ken decided to do 20 each time. Okay, so I've kind of analyzed what these two students wrote. Let's see what the questions are asking us here. <coughs> Ken claims that he did a better job because the points on his graph are higher than the points on Andrea's graph. Is Ken correct? Explain. So basically, Ken's saying that he did better because his points are higher on his graph than in Andrea's graph. Well, is this really correct? Let's take a look. I'm going to look and see Ken's graph here. This is about 80. I'd say this is about halfway between 80 and 100. I'd say that Ken probably did 90 sit-ups. Let me look at Andrea's graph. In 10 minutes, I see that this line's 100. I see that this line would be 50. So this would be 75. It's close to 100. I'd say it looks pretty much like 90. So looking at these two graphs, I would say that Ken is not correct because they both did 90 sit-ups. It doesn't matter that his dots are higher in the graph. I have to look at my intervals on the side I have to figure that out. B. In what ways do the results of the sit-up test show a pattern of endurance and physical activity that is similar to the results of the test ride by the Ocean Bike Tours partners? Whew, that was a lot to talk about there. In our, in our example here for the Ocean Bike Tours, they were talking about the rate. How did the rate change? So I had you look at the table in the first half hour they were able to ride 8 miles. In the next half hour, the total was 15, but they rode seven miles in that half hour. The next one, I believe, was a four mile um, increase each time going through. So we were looking at the table to figure out the rate, how much they went, uh, how many miles they went per half hour. Uh, so as we take a look here, how is this activity and the results here similar? Well, if you notice, the rate starts to change. You can see it dips down, it kind of slows down each time it kind of goes up a little bit, slows down. So we can assume that what may be happening to them. Well, yeah, well, use your own experience. You're doing the sit-up test going up and down and up and down. Stomach's hurting a little bit. Yeah, you're going to get a little bit tired. Your rate's going to slow down. Um, so that's something we can see. It's similar to the bike tours that they might be getting tired from riding so much. Their endurance slows down. Maybe they're going up and uphill or the weather, the wind's in their face. So there's a lot of different factors that could be uh, shown in these graphs here about why their rate would have slowed down. C. Which person had the greatest average number of sips per minute? Well, hmm, how do I figure that out? Let's take a look. In 10 minutes, they did 90 sit-ups. Well, Ken did 90 sit-ups. So, 90 sit-ups, and they did this for 10 minutes. So, they did 9 sit-ups per minute. So, that's his rate, Ken's. Let me look at Andrea's graph. She did 90 in 10 minutes. So 90 sit-ups divided by 10 minutes is nine sit-ups per minute. So who did who had the greatest average? 
They're both the same, right? They both did nine sit-ups per minute. That's the rate that they both were able to complete their sit-ups there. Again, analyzing what they came up with. All right, last one. It says compare Ken's place, place, his pace in the first two minutes to his pace in the last two minutes. So let's look at Ken's uh, one here, his graph. He's doing pretty good. He gets about 20 in, gets about 19 in there. Ooh, starts to kind of slow down a little bit. So if I were looking at his pace, I would say that it slows down. Well, how can I prove that? Mr. Lander, you always tell us, go back to the text, look at your problems, prove to me, justify. How do you know that? Well, I'm going to ask myself that question. Mr. Lander, how do you know that his pace slowed down? Well, let's take a look. He did 90 in 10 minutes. Well, let's look at two minutes. In two minutes, he did close to 40. So I'll call it, say, like 38. Um, or even if I rounded it to 40. Well, if he kept that pace for every two minutes he did 40, it would be 40, 80, 120, 160, 200. So if he kept that pace, he should have been at 200 sit-ups. Well, he did finish with 200. He finished with 90. So I just used one of my portions in this graph to prove that point. He did about 40 in the first two minutes, and then he did 50 in the next eight minutes. So his rate definitely slowed down throughout the test. And again, I just used the information from the graph here. I used what they had there for me to look at, and I was able to prove my point. All right, let's take a look at one for you. So as I get our next problem out, again, you can turn the page uh, in your book as well. We're going to take a look at problem eight, which is on page 26, if I can fit it up here. And this one's got a little bit more to it. Let's see if I can get that a little bit clearer for you guys. And fancy. Whoa, that's kind of weird. I can still see my hand up there. Kind of nice, we got the freeze button on there. Okay, let's take a look at eight. Uh, in question eight, you're going to take a look at three different graphs and you're gonna make some comparisons. So again, hopefully you have your book out at home. Uh, you got your paper, pencil, mind blanking today, I don't know what's going on. Uh, have your paper and pencil ready, go ahead and pause this video and we'll see what you come up with. All right, question eight. Three students made graphs of the population of a town called Huntsville. The break in the Y axis in graph A and C indicates that there are values missing between 0 and 8. So again, I'm going to look at graph A. I see that they're using a two-year interval for the years. Population is in thousands up here. They went by 0 to 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So there's an 8 interval, and then 2, 4, uh, 6, 8. They're going by 2 each time after. In graph B, years are in an interval by 2, and the graph went up by 2 each time. Graph C, interval for years are by 2, so the years are consistent. And this interval starts at 0 to 8, with at least a little doohickey there, a little break. And then it goes up by 4 each time. So the information in the graphs, you see the year intervals are the same. Population on the side in thousands is different. Well, what are they going to ask us to do with this information? Describe the relationship between time and population as shown in each of the graphs. Well, if I look at each of the graphs, I notice that the lines in the graphs are definitely different um, throughout. Well, why are these graphs different if they have the same information? Well, this comes in with the interval. If I look here in graph C, it goes from 0 to 8, and then the interval is by 4 each time. If I go to graph B, the interval is 2 each time, and here it starts at 8 and then goes by 2 each time. So how does this kind of uh, work for our graphs? If I look at this one, graph B, the intervals are consistent. This goes by 2 over here. This goes by 2 here. This plots out directly the population and how it grows. So if I look at graph B, I can tell that each year the population is steadily increasing based off that information. If I look at graph A, look at the difference between graph A and graph B. This looks like the population is just taking off um, from here and it's definitely increasing at a faster rate than B. And if I look at graph C down here, we'll just look at your line. What does it look like happening to the population? It looks like it increases a little bit, but it's not really a big jump. So when I describe the relationship between all three of these graphs, 
Graph B, I would say, shows the information in the best way. Now, when you think about misleading graphs, companies will do this all the time to make statistics or data show what they want to show. If I want to show that, hey man, our product is, is great, people are buying this all the time, uh, let me think of something. Silly bands maybe? I don't know if they're still in style or not. Say silly bands, I'm gonna work with that. Silly bands, oh look, it, it's great, we're selling all this stuff. I'm showing a really good graph here that shows exactly what's happening. Well, if I wanna make myself seem like, oh, we're doing better than we really are, I'm gonna use this graph up here. Take a look, our stuff, our sales are through the roof. We're going all the way up here. And then if I maybe wasn't so smart of an associate and I chose this graph here, you might lose your job or they might say, you're not selling enough silly bands because look, it looks like I'm barely making any progress in terms of my sales. So depending upon what you wanna show in the graphs, the way it's represented can totally change how you think about it. Again, these, thing, these three graphs throw the, the show the same information, but in three totally different ways. So keep that in mind when you're analyzing the data, look at your inter intervals and look at what's uh, being represented in the graphs because as I said, you'll start to see some companies will try to trick you into, uh, into looking at how these graphs work. Last part, B, is it possible that all three graphs correctly represent the population growth in Huntsville? Explain, we just talked about it, they do not. All three of these graphs do not correctly um, show us. They do have the same information, that is true. Yes, all three graphs correctly show the total population, but if I'm looking at the growth, it is shown in three different ways. And again, like I said, that's as you'll start to see companies will start to show growth, um, or like I said, probably sales for companies. You have to really start to become an, uh, an analyzer of what the graphs are telling you, look at the intervals, and look at the total information. Uh, one of my favorite things I always hear is not necessarily a graph, but like, and I don't remember the commercial, they talk about like four out of five dentists recommend this, and you know, so many people recommend this. Well, did you only ask five dentists? Was it out of how many people? What five dentists did you ask? You know, what, there's a lot more information than they're leading on, but they teach you to think, well, hey man, four out of five dentists prefer this, you know, uh, toothpaste. I'm going to go buy that because, you know, 80% of the dentists recommend it, which you don't know how many people actually do recommend it or who they ask. So think about that when you're analyzing the nice handy dandy graphs up here. You want to become uh, critical of how they are representing that information. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful episode of Mr. Lanier's Math Extravaganza. Go White Sox, and as always, we'll see you next time. See you later, hand.